Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to create a binomial probability distribution in Excel. Uh, if you use Excel, this is a very quick process because it will instantly give you the answers. If you have to do the hand calculations with the formulas, this can be a very time consuming process. Uh, so what the situation that we have is a die is rolled six times. Let X represent the number of times a five is rolled. So basically we've rolled the die six times and we're counting how many fives that we get. We can get at least or at the least zero. So it's possible to not get any of the six rolls to be a five. We could have one, two, three, four, five, or at most we could have all six of them. So a binomial probability distribution will list all of the possible outcomes as well as the probability of that happening. So in order to do this, you do need to know your number of trials. So your number of trials is just going to be the number of times the experiment is repeated. So in this case, n would be six. And you need to know the probability of success, which is one out of six because there's one five out of six on the die. Okay. Um, if you were using the formula, you would also have to know the probability of failure, uh, which is Q. And so you would do one minus P. So if I take one minus one sixth, it would give me five sixths. You don't need this for Excel, but if you were doing hand calculations, uh, you would need to be able to find your probability of failure as well. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up Excel. I've already created a little chart with X and the probability of X, and I've put in my values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Don't forget 0 because it's always possible not to have any successes in a trial. So always start with 0 and then end with your number of trials. So with this, what you're going to do is you're going to start typing equals, and you'll just start typing binome, and you're going to do the binome distribution. Okay, for this, our number that we have, I am going to select the cell for the first one. So in this case, zero would be my first one. And then I'll type in the rest of the values. My trials, remember with this, we had six. So there was a total of six times that we are creating this. The probability of success was one sixth. And then it's going to ask, is it true that it's a cumulative distribution function or is it false, which would just give us our um, probability? They call it a mass function. It's the same thing as the probability distribution function, so it's just an individual. We want to do false because with cumulative, it will add until you tell it to stop, and that's not what we're looking for. So cumulative, if I hit true on this, it would give me the probability of zero and add until I told it to stop. Um, which is not what we want. So we're going to put false in here because we just want that exact value. And then we would hit equals. So the probability of getting zero is 0.3349. Now I could retype all of those formulas, but because I selected the cell where my value was, if I drag it down, it will just automatically update the next one. And so if you notice that this one uses A3, A4, a5 and so the formula is preserved uh, nothing else changes um, and then you would just round to whatever decimal place it tells you it might be possible that when you started with this that this entire row was only defaulting to show two decimal places so if you need to show more decimal places you can just use these buttons up here that will show you however many decimal places you need to round to okay um, I could take the time to go and write all of these values down, but I'm not going to. Um, I would just put in all of these values for my probabilities on either my paper if I'm submitting it by hand or type it into whatever online homework platform I'm using. Okay, if you do need to create a histogram and want to see what it looks like, you can highlight the data and then you can go to charts. And I'm just going to go in and do all charts and I want to select the column chart and I want this one where it's not clustering the two. So I want this value. Um, it's best in a histogram that you have all of the cells touching and then you do want to put your access axis title for each of them. Um, so for the horizontal, this would be the number of times a five was rolled.
And we did it out of six trials. And then for this one over here, we would just select everything and put it as the probability. Okay, so you could put a title up here, um, like if you wanted to call it the die rolling experiment. The more information you have on the graph, the more beneficial it is to other people so they know exactly what they're looking at. Okay, um, if when you highlighted this, the quick analysis tool did not show up, you can just go to insert and your charts. This one, you can go to just more statistical charts and get to the same thing. So if that quick analysis tool doesn't show up, you can still create a... Um, histogram of your data uh, by going to insert and charts. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.